بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, I will start to record this uh, lecture film reading sessions in English in order to many of our friends who can't speak Arabic can get the benefit from these pictures and as usual we discuss different cases and start with a new case uh, this is 27 years old name who came with a past history of previous operation for surgical removal of one of uh, benign blast and he came for doing M MRI brain and whole spine okay uh, here this is a T2 and the flare axial images as usual uh, we can see there is a susceptibility weighted artifacts susceptibility artifact metallic artifacts are seen here at uh, the frontal parietal uh, left frontal parietal region from uh, the it's usually from the uh, uh, it's most likely from the operations the patient said and also in these lower sections we can see there is a fairly defined lesion here this fairly defined lesion is seen at the left paracellar region it exhibit uh, uh, a heterogeneous predominantly low signal in T2 and heterogeneous uh, intermediate to high signal in flare images and depending upon the location of such lesion there is a wide differential diagnosis as we know there is a, a, a cavernous sinus in uh, these locations so it could be one of uh, the uh, uh, content related uh, lesions we can we know that uh, the uh, carotid artery is one of the content of uh, the cavernous sinus so it could be uh, 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 one of the lesion related to the carotid artery for say an aneurysm we know that there is a multiple nerve within uh, the cavernous sinus so it could be one of the neurogenic tumors uh, nerve sheath tumors also the dural covering of the cavernous sinus uh, could be uh, the origin of such lesions it could be a uh, meningioma for say so there is a wide differential diagnosis in uh, the uh, such locations and such uh, 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 lesions uh, okay we noticed in inferior section of the region uh, that the region here is extend inferiorly uh, till uh, the uh, region of the masticator space we can see this uh, the lateral triboid muscle and the lesion here is a putting lateral triboid muscle so the lesion extend outside uh, the skull to uh, the mastic ipsilateral masticator space a putting the uh, uh, lateral triboid and such extension is uh, uh, very helpful to narrow the differential diagnosis the region is extend from uh, the paracellular region to the masticator space with no evidence of skull base destruction so it is usually extend along one of the skull base foramina and here one of the most important skull base foramina here is foramen oval this extension is better to be appreciated at coronal images this is coronal T2 and this is uh, the left paracellar fairly defined lesion and this is the inferior extension along uh, the foramen of oval which is present at uh, the uh, uh, floor of the middle cranial fossa okay uh, uh, the foramen oval contain one of uh, most important nerves pass along the foramen oval as we know the mandibular nerve which is one of uh, the uh, 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 three terminal branches of uh, the trigeminal ganglion okay so uh, this lesion is extend along the uh, course of uh, the mandibular nerve and uh, this is a characteristic of uh, uh, these characteristic extensions and uh, such characteristic extensions is uh, uh, can help narrow the differential diagnosis and can uh, 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 can be a clue for the origin of uh, such regions is uh, from the mandibular uh, nerve and uh, by uh, this benign criteria with no signs of invasions 
the lesions here is uh, mandibular nerve uh, sheath tumors is most likely to be uh, the nature of such lesions we can also uh, the uh, distension of the Meckel's cave we can see here a uh, CSF like space surrounding uh, the lesion uh, it is uh, uh, distended by the lesions this CSF like space is uh, the Meckel's cave we can see here the normal Meckel's cave on the contralateral side will contain speckled appearance of uh, the trigeminal ganglion this is the normal size of uh, the Meckel's cave here the Meckel's cave is distended by uh, such lesions and uh, uh, again this is uh, with uh, the uh, uh, ensure that the lesion is within uh, the Meckel's cave and extend along uh, the uh, course of uh, the uh, mandibular nerve so uh, it's this lesion is most likely representing a mandibular nerve sheath uh, uh, tumor and in post contrast images this lesion okay this is a coronal post contrast images and this is the axial post contrast images the lesions here show heterogeneous avid enhancement and uh, the extension is uh, well delineated at uh, post contrast uh, images this is a coronal image and this is the uh, uh, distended nickel case surrounding the lesion in post contrast images we noticed also there is a multiple extra axial lesions that present at here uh, the bottom of the falx cerebri and in the uh, extra axial uh, left uh, parietal region and at uh, the uh, high right parieto occipital region these lesions show the characteristic homogeneous uh, enhancement and uh, dural tail and uh, wide contact with the dural base these uh, features are keeping with multiple meningiomata so the patient have uh, multiple meningiomata with uh, 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 a left multiple meningiomata with a left mandibular nerve sheath tumors uh, such combinations between uh, multiple meningiomata and uh, the a nerve sheath tumor we should in uh, a young patient we should suspect that the patient has a neurofibromatosis type 2 as we know the neurofibromatosis type 2 is uh, uh, we should consider when uh, there is a multiple meningiomata as here multiple meningiomata and uh, multiple uh, nerve sheath tumors and uh, once we suspect that the patient is neurofibromatosis type 2 we should look for uh, the uh, uh, cerebellopontine angle and the internal atrium meters to see the vestibular cochlear nerve schwannomas and uh, as we see here there is a uh, enhancing lesions along the internal atrium meters along the course of the vestibular cochlear nerve they are bilateral more uh, the larger size uh, the more larger being uh, uh, large larger on the uh, right side so this is a bilateral nerve sheath uh, vertebral cochlear nerve sheath schwannomas which is one of the characteristic and pathognomonic finding in a patient with a neurofibromatosis type 2 as we say we said before multiple time if you see a bilateral vestibular cochlear nerve sheath uh, 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 tumor or bilateral vestibular cochlear schwannomas you should uh, say that the patient have a neurofibromatosis type 2 and this reveal the importance of the contrast enhancement in uh, the Petras study uh, if you searching for a cerebral montane angle or internal detrimiatus lesions you should uh, uh, inject the patient uh, with contrast as uh, such small lesions is uh, 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 well delineated at uh, post contrast images and uh, without contrast images you can easily miss such small lesions at uh, the internal detrimatus 
or uh, along the course of the vestibular cochlea. So up till now, the patient have bilateral vestibular cochlear nerve schwannomas, have a left mandibular uh, nerve schwannomas, and also have multiple meningiomata. And I think the uh, previous operation uh, was uh, to remove one of uh, uh, the uh, benign tumors, could be meningiomas, uh, one of a large meningioma have a mass effect and he do this surgery to remove such uh, uh, benign neoplasm. Okay, the patient also do an MRI for uh, the whole spine and uh, uh, as we expect uh, in patient with a neurofibromatosis type 2 we are looking for or we are searching uh, the spinal cord for exclusion of uh, one of uh, the characteristic lesions that is present with uh, uh, the patient with neurofibromatosis type 2 which are uh, the spinal cord even daimon. Okay, uh, we see this is an MRI cervical, this is a T2, this is a T1 and we see uh, a multiple very uh, fairly defined lesions scattered along the course or, or the, along the length of uh, the cervical cord these lesions are uh, intermediate signal exhibiting intermediate signal in T2 and intermediate uh, signal at T1 and we can see these uh, lesions are uh, surrounded by a massive disproportionate edema and these lesions show areas of cystic areas of degeneration within and in post contrast images we can see the lesions uh, take uh, an avid heterogeneous or uh, 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 rather uh, non uniform uh, 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 enhancement at post contrast at post contrast images all these criteria are in keeping with spinal cord imendiomoma uh, the well definition of the regions the heterogeneous or non uniform enhancement avid enhancement at both contrast images the disproportionate edema the areas of cystic degenerations all all these criteria of spinal cord imendiomoma and these is these lesions such lesions are matching with uh, the uh, uh, criteria of neurofibromatosis type 2 as we know the neurofibromatosis type 2 are combinations are usually association between the meningiomas the schwannomas and the spinal cord even demo also there is a, a characteristic finding here in uh, such lesions with a peripheral uh, 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 dark signal t2 uh, signal dark t2 signal rem uh, uh, of uh, hemozedrin that present at the upper pool of uh, that lesions which is characteristic of hemozedrin cap which is one of the pathognomonic feature of the spinal cord ibn demo. so these lesions are representing spinal cord ibn daimoma in uh, the uh, dorsal spine we see also uh, the uh, uh, other similar lesions extending along uh, the whole length of uh, the spinal cord down to even the conus medullaris. In such patient, we searching uh, the spinal cord for uh, spinal cord even daimoma. Yes, this is uh, the first uh, 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 item we should look for. Uh, but there is another uh, uh, point. Uh, two uh, or another uh, lesions we should search in patient with neurofibrotosis when we examine the spinal cord uh, the another lesions is the nerve sheath tumors along the spinal along the nerve exit from and uh, uh, this is an important because uh, 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 such patients have could be have a nerve sheath tumors with uh, uh, in involving the nerve root and to examine uh, 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 or to see the nerve roots uh, 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 for for better assessment of the nerve root we should do coronal images coronal post contrast images we can see here that the this is uh, this these are the brachial plexus nerve roots coming from uh, the neural exit foramina and we can see there is a uh, enhancing lesions along these 
uh, uh, spinal cord nerves this is on the left side there is an enhancing lesion along with the uh, roots of uh, the cervical uh, uh, spinal nerves and this is characteristic for a uh, nerve sheath tumors along the uh, roots of uh, the brachial plexus and these are one of uh, the important finding we usually miss in a patient with neurofibromatosis type 2 so uh, if you uh, 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 do an MRI whole spine in a patient with a neurofibromatosis type 2 you should you should look for the neural exit foramina to exclude the nerve sheath tumor as you as you should you, as you see uh, the spinal cord and uh, you uh, oh, uh, we we all want to exclude uh, if there is a spinal cord even dimoma you should also look for the nerve sheath tumors along the neural exit foramina and this is one of uh, the most important finding in patient with neurofibromatosis type 2 and we usually don't look for it and usually we miss it in our examinations and do the similar thing in uh, the uh, dorsal nerve roots and here there is uh, uh, this is uh, the dorsal nerve root but there is no such no such enhancing lesions in uh, the neural exit phenomena so there is no nerve sheath tumors along the uh, 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 dorsal uh, uh, nerve roots in the number you should look for uh, 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 nerve roots in two uh, spa uh, two places the first place is along the uh, neural exit foramina as here there is no lesions and uh, the second place which was one of the important is uh, the coda equina nerve roots the also the coda equina nerve roots could be uh, one of uh, the sites for the nerve sheath tumors so in patient with a neurofibromatosis type 2 uh, when we do an MRI spine, you should look for the spinal cord to examine, to exclude the spinal cord in the moments, and you should look for the neural exit foramina to exclude the nerve sheath tumors and the coda, uh, the co uh, cone equina region also uh, to exclude uh, the uh, uh, coda equina nerve sheath tumor. The last item to uh, look carefully if you see a spinal cord even dimoma is uh, the uh, if there is a, a lip to meningeal enhancement or not uh, uh, as we know that uh, the spinal cord even dimoma is one of the most common cause of uh, the lip to meningeal seedling and lip to meningeal enhancement there are multiple lesions that can uh, produce lip to meningeal enhancement and lip to meningeal seedling and one of the most common causes of lip to meningeal enhancement is uh, the spinal cord even daimon as we see here there is an a faint uh, effuse enhancement here along uh, the ventral aspect of the spinal cord here this is a lip to meningeal enhancement it could be a lip to meningeal seedling or lip to meningeal uh, 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 metastasis from uh, the spinal cord even the moon. so in this patient we can see the full picture and full sign and full radiological sign of the neurofibromatosis type 2 we can see that the patient have a multiple meningiomata the patient have a multiple schwannomas that involve the cranial nerve and also the spinal cord peripheral nerves and the patient have a multiple spinal cord even diamonds this is the full picture of patient with a neurofibromatosis type 2 okay the second case here with uh, a, a female 56 years old female coming complaining of dyspnea the patient do CT chest and here we can find there is which is called this is the CT chest here and we can see the different colors of uh, the uh, lung attenuations present predominantly at both lower loop can see clearly here uh, which called mosaic pattern 
of uh, the post lung field which are areas of ground glass intermingled with areas of air trapping uh, uh, these a pattern called a mosaic pattern when there is a two different color involving the lung field this is called mosaic pattern which are areas of areas of ground glass attenuation intermingled with areas of air trapping the areas of air trapping is uh, uh, to ensure the areas of air trapping are pathological we should uh, see uh, the vessels uh, in the area of low attenuation if the vessels are pruned or attenuated this uh, uh, ensure that these lesions are uh, or this area are pathological and representing area of air trapping as in such the area we can see that uh, truly there is a attenuation of the vessel within the area of air trapping and by this we can uh, make sure that these area are areas of air trapping so the patient here have an intermingled areas between the areas of ground glass and areas of air trapping once you see such pattern of areas of ground glass intermingled with areas of air trapping and you sh you uh, 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 are quite sure uh, uh, that the area of air trapping are pathological and areas of air trapping are uh, 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 are uh, uh, showing attenuation of or pruning of the vessel you should suspect that the patient or you should put the possibility of subacute hypersensitivity pneumonitis in your considerations so when you see uh, this pattern of attenuations of affection of the lung fields you should suspect a, uh, uh, that the patient have a subacute hypersensitivity pneumonitis and by asking the patient after that if she had a contact with birds or she had raising a birds and she said yes there is a, she had a, a contact relation to the uh, uh, birds and she she were raising a bird uh, uh, so uh, this is a typical for a case with a neurofibromatosis type 2 Uh, sorry for a uh, hypersensitivity uh, subacute hypersensitivity in United. this is a, a 26 years old male who came complaining of uh, cough and expectorations and uh, do doing a CT chest this CT chest reveal uh, the characteristic abnormality here uh, linear we can see the characteristic linear branching uh, dentistes which called a uh, tree in butt infiltrated uh, these tree in butt infiltrates uh, one of uh, the sign of one of the important sign uh, of cellular bronchiolitis so uh, the patient have uh, a predominantly lower low areas of tree in butt infiltrates which meaning that the patient uh, uh, have a cellular bronchiolitis and as we know one of the most important cause of the cellular bronchiolitis is infection and on top of the causes is the TB infection so once you see a tree in butt infiltrate you should uh, think about infection and uh, 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 on top of uh, the causes is uh, the TB infections so uh, we consider this patient have a TB infections and we can see also here some abnormality that present at the apical segment of uh, the lower loop which is representing uh, uh, cylindrical bronchiectatic changes we can see this is a cylindrical bronchiectatic changes with uh, surrounding areas of consolidations forming which looks like uh, cavitary lesions uh, but actually a, a cylindrical bronchiectus we can make sure about these uh, lesions are uh, dilated bronchi in coronal images we can see here this is a dilated bronchi and this uh, 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 spaces here are 
branching and are communicating with the bronchi so these lesions are usually uh, are uh, most likely to be uh, cylindrical uh, uh, cystic uh, bronchiectetic changes rather than uh, cavitary lesions uh, we noticed in uh, this uh, uh, dilated chronically dilated bronchi there is a polyboidal lesions are seen within uh, the uh, dilated bronchi uh, they are better to be appreciated in volume study here this is uh, the volume axial CT volume we can see this is uh, the dilated bronchi and we can see here this is uh, the polyboidal lesions that is present within the dilated bronchi there is a similar with a smaller lesion here in the inferior uh, sections so uh, uh, we uh, see a polyboidal lesions within uh, the uh, 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 and there is another one here at uh, the uh, dilated bronchi uh, such uh, polyboidal lesions within a uh, chronically dilated bronchi in patient with uh, his with uh, uh, with uh, signs of TB infection, we should think about uh, the uh, mycetoma infection or fungal pool infection. Uh, uh, these lesions, polyboidal lesions, show the characteristic ear crescent sign here. So uh, this uh, typical for uh, the mycetoma or uh, the uh, fungal infection. Uh, but in the mediastinal window, if we do, uh, if we see in the mediastinal window, we notice something that such polyboidal lesions are intensely enhancing. They are enhancing, avidly enhancing, and even the lesions uh, and even the enhancement pattern is matching or equal to the contrast in uh, the vessels. So. Uh, we reconsider uh, the possibility of uh, uh, the uh, secular aneurysms rather than fungal infection and uh, uh, there is, this is one of the rare complication of the TB infection is to be uh, secular aneurysms which called arrhythmiocene aneurysms but to uh, for to be sure that these lesions are truly enhancement and not hyperdense, we should uh, uh, see the pre-contrast or non-contrast CT uh, studies. But unfortunately, the patient here didn't do a non-contrast CT study. All the study or the series here are uh, uh, with uh, after contrast injection, so we have no. Uh, uh, have uh, no way to make sure that these lesions are truly avidly enhancing or uh, uh, or not so we uh, can put the two possibilities of uh, the fungal infection or uh, the uh, uh, secular aneurysms for further better assessment with a CT and geographic uh, uh, studies to uh, 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 differentiate between such two lesions. So the patient here uh, have a TB infections and we uh, 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 reach this diagnosis by the presence of uh, the signs of tree in bud and cellular bronchiolitis and this is one of the characteristic finding of uh, 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 TB infection and also uh, by the presence of a, a cylindrical uh, cystic bronchiectetic changes uh, with uh, surrounding areas of uh, consolidation present at uh, the uh, apical segment of the right lower loop and these lesions showing uh, these dilated bronchi showing uh, uh, polyboidal lesions that could be uh, uh, a, a secondary fungal infection or uh, uh, secular aneurysms racemucine aneurysms for further CT and geographic correlations. Okay.
Here, one of uh, the uh, urgent cases we discuss, uh, uh, 56 years old male who came from, or he, or he came complaining of uh, symptoms and signs of intestinal obstructions and uh, uh, do CT uh, abdomen and pelvis and we can see in these uh, 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 serial of images that there is a signs of intestinal obstructions and uh, dilatations of uh, the uh, bowel loops showing multiple air fluid levels these, these are the signs of uh, intestinal obstruction. This is a dilatation of the power loops showing multiple air flow level. These are keeping with uh, uh, signs of intestinal obstruction. Okay, there are certain uh, rules and certain important points in patients with intestinal obstructions you should uh, consider. The first point, uh, uh, the first important point is to uh, determine the level of the obstruction where is the level of the obstruction where is what's called the transitional zone or the transitional point the transitional point it is the point between the dilated bowel loops and the collapsed bowel loops and it was it's one of uh, one of the important one of uh, one of uh, the most important point is in uh, uh, IO patient uh, we must uh, 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 comment on uh, the uh, on it on CT report with uh, the uh, patient with intestinal obstruction. Okay, to know the level of the obstruction or to know the uh, transitional point where it is, uh, uh, it is advisable to uh, begin uh, from the rectum and extend proximally. Uh, rather than uh, to begin from the small bowel. If you start from the small bowel, it's usually uh, uh, more difficult and usually you will uh, lost when you follow uh, the small bowel. It's much e easier to start uh, with the rectum and extend proximally. Okay, here this is uh, the rectum that contain uh, the uh, uh, contrast here and this is uh, the descending colon the descending colon is collapsed and we can extend proximally this is the descending colon which is collapsed this is a descending colon which is collapsed okay this is a descending colon which is collapsed here and this is uh, the transverse colon which is dilated this is the transverse colon is dilated and contain air fluid level so the transitional point here is uh, the splenic flexure here this is uh, the splenic flexure which is the uh, area or the point between the dilated transverse colon and the collapsed uh, 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 descending colon so this point is uh, the transitional point or transitional zone uh, 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 in uh, the uh, in the splenic flexure so uh, this is the first important point in uh, the IO patient is to determine the transitional point. The second point is to determine the cause of the intestinal obstruction which usually present at the transitional point. What is the cause of uh, the intestinal obstruction? There is a multiple uh, 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 causes for intestinal obstruction. And here in this patient, we can see that the transitional point here, there is a short segment, short segment of irreg irregular mural thickening. You can see that there is a short segment of irregular mural thickening. This short segment showing the characteristic shouldering or inverted edges. And this is one of the uh, important sign that indicative of uh, malignancy or uh, neoplasm. So uh, this irregular neural thickening with shouldering or uh, uh, inverted edges uh, is likely to be representing neoplastic natures and this is the cause of the intestinal obstruction. So this patient have an intestinal obstruction down to small and large bowel intestinal obstruction down to the level of the splenic flexure showing a regular short segment mural thickening with a shouldering and characteristic features of suggestive of uh, uh, a neoplastic 
uh, natures shows some sort of exophytic here exophytic component with the smudging of uh, the small exophytic component with the smudging of the surrounding fire shear planes okay we also noticed here in this patient there is a large mass lesions occupying most of the right hepatic loop so the patient do uh, actually uh, a triphasic study and these lesions is in the arterial phase and this is the portal phase and this is uh, the uh, delayed phase we can see that these lesions in these dynamic studies become more and more smaller in size and uh, the uh, faint enhancement at uh, the arterial phase become more and more obvious in the portal and more and more obvious at the delayed study so uh, this pattern of enhancement which is a progressive enhancement at uh, the uh, uh, delayed images is usually uh, 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 one of uh, the three differential diagnoses as we said before could be hemangiomas could be a cholangiocarcinoma and could be a metastasis this is not a hemangioma as the enhancement here or here or here is not nodular as uh, uh, we expect in hemangioma so this is not a hemangioma could be cholangiocarcinoma there is a no uh, peripheral uh, uh, no uh, uh, biliradical dilatations and it is most likely to be metastasis uh, especially in such patient with a splenic flexure neoplasm so this is the primary and this is uh, the uh, 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 this hepatic focal lesion is usually metastatic from the splenic flexure neoplasm so this patient have a splenic flexure neoplasm causing pros proximal intestinal obstruction and associated with a large hepatic mass lesions right hepatic lobe mass lesion likely to be metastatic in origin okay here another case this patient 40, 44 years old uh, patient who came complaining uh, of a uh, right renal uh, uh, mass lesion for further CT assessment uh, but he, do an, he did an ultrasound and uh, discovered uh, instantly there is a, a renal mass lesions for further uh, triphasic CT assessment we can clearly see there is a, a predominantly fatty lesions is seen projected from the lower bowl of uh, the right kidney these lesions is predominantly fat it uh, is uh, seen here in uh, the coronal images we can see that the regions is predominantly fatty and showing non fatty element and traversing blood vessels within uh, the lesions and as a, a, a general rule we uh, said before if you see a fatty lesion arising from the kidney you should uh, 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 put the uh, possibility of angiomyolipoma in uh, the uh, differential diagnosis uh, uh, so this lesion is usually angiomyolipoma uh, these lesions show a characteristic uh, finding for angiomyolipoma which is called cortical notch sign you can see that the lesions is exophytic here and there is a wedge shaped defect uh, from uh, uh, which uh, the lesion arise from the kidney this which shape defect indicate that the lesion is arising from uh, the kidney and so we can uh, 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 make sure that the lesion here is arising from the kidney and we can easily put angiomyolipoma in uh, the diagnosis uh, and this is one of the important uh, uh, signs to indicate uh, that the lesions is arising from the kidney especially in uh, the exophytic uh, uh, such exophytic lesions uh, uh, we can uh, by this uh, sign we can uh, uh, make sure that the lesions is arising from the kidney this is uh, the similar case here predominantly fatty lesions at uh, the left lumbar regions that is a putting even the lower pool of the left kidney it is similar to the 
previously uh, uh, discussed case here the predominantly fatty lesion here that is abutting uh, the lower pool of the left kidney and showing traversing uh, blood vessels and non-fatty element so uh, uh, the only difference here that there is no cortical notch sign we didn't see here the cortical the wedge shaped effect from uh, 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 present at uh, the renal cortex so uh, this indicate that such lesion, lesion does not arise from the kidney and by this we can't say that this lesion is angiomyeloma as these lesions does not arise from the kidney it usually arise from the retroperitoneal and by this we must put the possibility of retroperitoneal liposarcoma in the differential diagnosis and not angiomyeloma. So this uh, reveals the importance of cortic cortical notch sign in uh, the large exophytic fatty lesions from the kidney. If uh, the fatty lesions showing cortical notch sign indicate that the lesions arising from the kidney and this lesions is angiomyeloma, if you don't see uh, the cortical notch sign, you can't say that these lesions arising from the kidney and you should put other possibilities and on top of the other possibilities that rising from the retroperitoneal spaces here and predominantly fat lesion is the retroperitoneal liposarcoma and here this is an example of the retroperitoneal liposarcoma this lesion is fairly defined this is displacing the descending colon anteriorly and abutting the somas muscle and abutting the anterior aspect of the lower bowl of the left kidney showing traversing blood vessels and non-fatty elements so this is the characteristic of the uh, lipo retroperitoneal liposarcoma the final two cases here are uh, uh, this uh, case is a uh, male patient 62 years old he uh, came uh, with uh, for triphasic CT assessment for a hepatic focal lesion that is ablated here and there is uh, this is a well ablated focal lesion but there is an incidental interesting finding in its urinary bladder there is a, a mural calcification diffuse mural calcification of uh, the urinary bladder and this is uh, one of the important uh, radiological sign of urinary bladder bilharziasis so this is an incidental finding but it is an interesting finding of uh, urinary bladder uh, 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 the diffuse mural thickening as we said before there is a diffuse mural thickening involving the urinary bladder and uh, sometimes it uh, involves the lower end of uh, the distal uh, uh, ureter or vasico ureteric junction the last case here is uh, all also a, a urinary bladder case this is a, 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 a male patient 47 years old uh, uh, he uh, came complaining of uh, hematuria and uh, do a CT urography study there is a, a, as we see here in the uh, uh, CT sections of the pelvis we can see multiple multifocal or multiple uh, endophytic polyboidal lesions that is arising from the posterolateral aspect of the urinary bladder as well as the right lateral aspect of the urinary bladder these polyboidal lesions are uh, likely to be neoplastic in nature and the multifocality is one of the important mm, uh, uh, finding uh, and the clue for uh, the urothelial uh, tumors or transitional cell carcinoma of the urinary bladder and this is one of uh, the most important finding to differentiate between uh, the transitional cell carcinoma of the urinary bladder and the squamous cell carcinoma is the presence of multifocality this is is goes with or matching with uh, the 
uh, uh, urethia tumor and not with the squamous cell carcinoma. So this case with uh, uh, this case is presented or uh, presenting the uh, transitional cell carcinoma of the urinary bladder. We can also uh, see there is another region at the left lateral aspect as well. Okay, there is an important uh, 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 finding here and you must uh, uh, mention it in your report is the involvement of the vasicoureteric junction. The lesions here is seen involving the rift vasicoureteric junction and also to a uh, large extent the lesion here is involving the right vasicoureteric junction so these lesions on both sides are involving the vasicoureteric junction more evident at the left side this is important as it usually dif uh, differ in uh, the stages of uh, such uh, neoplasm as it usually indicates there is a uh, uh, muscle layer invasions and this differentiate uh, the uh, such lesions it's usually upgrade the staging of such lesions uh, and uh, uh, it's usually make a difference in the management so this lesion this patient have a, a multifocal transitional cell carcinoma associated with bilateral back pressure back pressure changes and uh, more evident and vasicoureteric junction uh, involvement more evident at uh, the left side Thank you very much.